Hey guys, it's Denise from my hat again, and this time we're knitting ballerinas. Keep in mind that this is part one, so you will have to come back in order to finish your doll. And please, please watch the video completely before starting the project. All right, let's begin with the drawstring cast on. I'm gonna start by securing my working yarn to the anchor peg with a very simple knot. Now you can use a slip knot if that's gonna work better for you. And then I'm gonna take my yarn and put it between the first and last peg and then bring it forward. And now I'm going to zigzag between the pegs. It's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna continue around the whole loom until I've cast on 24 pegs. And I'm back at the front of the loom and I'm going to go behind peg one and loosely then I'm going to place the yarn get my hook and I'm going to knit off every peg that has two loops in other words I'm going to knit off every other peg notice that I'm placing the working yarn above the existing loops on the pegs only a couple at a time until I reach back at that first peg and then I'm just going to place the working yarn right over it I'm going to knit off the last peg and then I'm going to start on the head and the chest. I'm going to be knitting 15 rows for the head and 13 for the chest. Now only for row one, I'm going to skip this first peg, take my yarn and put it over the loop on the second peg and knit off. We're going to be using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch and to do the U-wrap, you're just going to take the working yarn and you're going to half wrap your peg like this. Take the loop from the bottom over the top and knit off. Again, you're going to half wrap your peg and knit off. This is the stitch that we're going to use throughout the project. And for this part, we're going to knit nine rows in the round. In other words, we're going around and around it in a circle until we've done our nine rows. In between, we're going to remove the knot from the anchor peg because to leave it on can cause some problems. So about two or three rows into your nine, you're going to do that. After you finish knitting that last peg for row nine, you're not going to then knit the next peg next to it, which is peg one. Instead, you're going to turn around and knit the same peg because starting with row 10, we're gonna be knitting flat, which means back and forth instead of in a circle. Finish knitting all of your pegs until you come back to peg one. And at this point, you're going to start row 11. And with row 11, we're going to start decreasing by one stitch. I'm going to use the basic bind off in order to decrease. And this is done over two stitches. So first, knit off that first stitch go to the second one and you're going to knit off that second stitch and then you're going to take the loop off that peg and move it back to the first stitch and then tighten if you want to and knit off that peg and then take that loop off and move it over and now you have reduced your stitches by one. So instead of having 23, 24 pegs with stitches, you only have 23. And now you're going to finish row 11. So you're gonna keep knitting until you get back to peg 24, which means you finish row 11 and you're ready to start row 12. You're also going to reduce row 12 by one stitch. Now that's your anchor peg and it tells you this is peg 24 and that's peg one. So here at peg 24, you're going to turn around. We're on row 12 and we're going to again decrease by one using the basic bind off. So knit the first stitch and then knit the second one, knit off, take the loop off that second peg, move it over to the first peg of the row, knit off, and then move that stitch back over to this second one. 
and now you have reduced your row twice. So you have 22 instead of 24 pegs. And you're going to keep doing this uh, for row 13 and 14, and that's going to take you down from 24 pegs to 20 pegs with stitches. Row 15, you don't have to decrease. You're just going to knit those 20 pegs. When you finish row 15, you're done with the head, and now it's time to start knitting the chest. I'm going to be changing yarn color to pink in order to match the skirt. To change the color, get the working yarn and take it around more than half of the loom and then cut with your scissors and get your other color. You're going to need to leave a long tail in order to use them uh, to sew up the sides and make a knot. Try to get that knot as close to the peg as you possibly can and you can make one, two knots, I mean whatever makes you feel comfortable. In my case I do at least two of them and then you can start knitting. At this point you have 20 pegs with stitches and so for row 16 you're going to knit all 20 pegs. You're not going to decrease. So you're going to keep knitting and when you get to that last peg, you're now on row 17, and for row 17, you are going to start to decrease. So use the basic bind off technique in order to reduce by one stitch, and you are going to repeat this from rows 18 till 20, decreasing by one until you're down to just 16 pegs with stitches. For rows 21 through 28, you're not going to decrease. You will knit 16 stitches and then we'll do a drawstring cast off. For this, you're going to take your yarn and take it around your loom and cut a long enough piece to get through all of the 16 pegs. And from the bottom of each loop, you're going to scoop up that working yarn and feed it through. So scoop it up and feed it through and you need to cover all of your loops. So make sure everybody is covered and when you are done with that last peg, you've made sure that all your loops have working yarn. You can then just take all those loops off of the pegs and your project is now free from the loom and you need to stretch those stitches. Remember to always stretch your stitches when you're done with your cast off. And you're going to take these, um, the long tail strings that I had told you about, and we're going to go ahead and sew up the sides. So get your needle. I'm using a metal needle, which now I so much love over the plastic ones but if you have a plastic one, you can use it. Now I'm going to try to make sure that the ugly edge that you see stays on the inside. And so I'm kind of curving uh, those edges to make sure that when I sew, I'm sewing the inner um, loops so that the edge, the ugly edge stays on the inside of the project and doesn't show up on the outside. And I'm using the beige yarn for the beige part of the project. When I'm done, I then am going to take the pink yarn and I'm gonna use that yarn to sew up the pink section, which in my case is the chest. If yours is all one color, then you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you um, 
when you're done with that pink part just remember not to close it all the way because you need some space in order to fill it now you look at the other side and you pull on those stitches again and if you see that um, you're not too happy with the way it turned out you can go ahead with your needle and you can bring that a little tighter you know bring it closer and then just sew again it's okay you can do that you have permission you can sew from the outside actually and even though this looks a little odd um, it's okay you can do that what you want is to try to minimize how much uh, it looks like a seam, right? It's still going to look like a seam, but you want to reduce it as much as possible. And then if you want to, you can secure these two uh, loose um, working yarns. It's not vital. You could just do that if you want. And then um, you can cut them off or you can leave them. It doesn't matter. I normally will leave them. And then you can start pulling on the top uh, cast on the, which is the top of your head you want to close it up so you're pulling on these strings in order to close that cast on as tight as you can don't worry too much about it because we're going to put some hair so it's not crucial but you want it to look as neat as possible anyway just so that you can work with it well so get your needle and you're going to thread it with that working yarn and then to close it up a little nicer we're going to sew in a circular manner around that opening now someone was asking about how to secure a hat really well and make sure that that part doesn't reopen well if you sew the uh, if you sew in this way around it's not going to open and then what you do when you feel comfortable go ahead and make a knot and and that will secure your yarn for sure your head and chest are now done and you've closed your top and you've finished your seam so now pull on the edging uh, from the chest you don't want to overdo this because you just want to neaten up those edges you're not trying to close uh, that part uh, you need it open because this is the section where you're going to start to stuff the head and you want to do that nicely but lightly so don't get all carried away just put enough in it so that you can clearly see that you have a face then you need to um, thread your needle and now you're going to weave in and out with your threaded needle matching thread and i know kindergarten told you you could you know go outside the lines but in this section you cannot you need to stay within the lines bring that thread all the way to the back and pull on it nice and tightly it's going to define the head as uh, opposed to the chest and you're going to make a nice tight knot and now we're ready to go on to the next section we're going to knit a total of 15 rows for the arms and hands now with the flesh tone yarn you're going to secure it to the anchor peg and I'm doing a simple knot then take the working yarn between pegs 24 and 1 and then bring it forward between pegs 1 and 2 and we're going to zigzag through every other peg until we've covered six of them so count out your pegs one two three four five six and then bring it forward between the last and the fifth peg and then over the other five and now we're going to knit off every peg with two loops in this case it's only two pegs so knit off peg two and peg four and your cast on is done and now we're going to go ahead and start the row so bring your yarn forward and half wrap peg two you're going to skip that first peg only on the first row and knit off peg two and now you're going to continue knitting your row so go ahead and knit off those last four pegs and when you get to the last one which is peg six you're going to see that it looks a little odd no biggie just bring that yarn forward and half wrap 
peg six and knit off and then try to tighten the yarn just a little bit before you turn around because we're going to knit flat and knit that peg again and now you're heading in the opposite direction so go ahead and knit all five of your pegs that are left to knit and we're going to be doing 15 rows for the arms and remember that you don't count your cast on so you're going to finish this row and keep knitting until you've done 15. Now before then I want you to remember to remove the knot from the anchor peg so when you're around you know row three or four you can go ahead and undo that knot that is on your anchor peg and don't forget if you leave it there it is going to give you a bit of a problem. When you're done with your 15 rows, it's time to cast off. Take the working yarn and you're going to wrap it around the six uh, pegs two times. In fact, uh, going over a little is a good thing. Cut the working yarn and now you're going to, just like before, take your hook and you're going to feed that working yarn through your pegs from the bottom up and make sure that you get all six of your pegs. And just like you did with your last cast off, you're going to do the same thing with this one. When you finish with all of your pegs, just take the loops off the pegs and your fabric is free from your loom. You're going to stretch your stitches like you always should and then grab the cast on loops and pull in order to close your work. Now the cast off always has like one stitch that stays a little bit loose and we're going to fix that. The other side, not so much. This is the one with the problem. All right, so grab the bottom of the loop. It's right there. And get your crochet hook. You can see already that it's looking better. It lines up with the other ones. Feed the crochet hook through it and feed the working yarn through that loop all the way out, tighten it up, and there you have it. They all line up much better now. Get your yarn needle and we're going to get ready to sew the arms closed. So we're gonna seam up that opening, all right? Now you have two ends and to me, one side kinda looks more like little fingers than the other side like to me that looks like fingers it doesn't really matter I just like that end better and I usually start there uh, on that end because as I'm going upward it's the other side that I'm gonna sew onto the doll alright so you have these edges and just like before these are ugly so I want to roll them in so you're gonna like merge two rows together because these look nicer and as you sew in the middle of the two it will create another row that looks neater all right so just like before we're going to use what i believe is the mattress stitch and so instead of going uh, side to side side to side what you do is that you go up one of the stitches and then go over all right so you can see the little v's and you're going to go in between one and go over to the other side so I'm on the right I'm gonna go up first and then over and again you can see that I'm going in between the little V's up and over and when you pull the string you don't want to pull it too tight because if you do it starts to look kind of wavy and that's not what you're wanting you're wanting straight uh, because 
you want the seam to almost disappear. Keep going all the way to the top. And again, as I bring that string upward, I am able to use it if I want to, to sew the arm onto the doll. And go all the way up to the top. And as you can see, it's hard to tell where the seam actually is, especially once I stretch the little arm out. You can't really see it. All right, so your little arm is done. And of course, that's one and you need another. We're ready for the legs and feet. We're gonna do three rows for the feet and 22 for the legs. Get your fashion color ready because we're going to do the feet first, which are basically the shoes. Secure that yarn to the anchor peg and then let's start with our drawstring cast on by zigzagging between your pegs until you have seven of them. And then lay your yarn flat and we're gonna knit off every peg that has two stitches. And just like before, we're gonna turn around and lay the yarn over. Now I wanted to show you a flat uh, knit stitch because it's a tighter stitch. And I think some of you guys might want to do that. So knit off your uh, stitches. And as you can see, I am not curving it in like I would a, um, you wrap now we do need to decrease here a again so when you turn around you're going to knit those first two stitches and just like before we're going to take that stitch off move it over and knit off and then we're going to take that loop and move it over and that's going to decrease by one now we only have six pegs with stitches and we're gonna go ahead and knit the remainder of our pegs, which would be five pegs that we're gonna knit off, including that first one. And we're gonna decrease again. So tighten your loop and you can see here that we have two, the cast on and row one. And so now we're gonna turn around and decrease again. So knit those first two stitches and we're going to remove that loop, move it over, tighten, knit off, and move that loop over. And now we're down to only five pegs, right? Cause that's what we want. We want to have only five pegs pegs with stitches on them and we're going to finish this row and that basically finishes our little feet or shoes you can see your three rows right here and now you're going to take that working yarn and go ahead and cut it you don't need a long tail this time um, and you get your flesh tone and go ahead and connect the two colors and you don't need a long tail for your flesh color either. Just make a basic knot. Um, and I might have cut mine a little too short, but I try not to waste uh, too much yarn, so that's why my pieces are so tiny. Uh, I make a second knot, and you don't have to, but I like to be secure. And now I'm gonna turn around because I'm knitting flat and I'm going to knit the rest of my stitches on five pegs. So for the flesh tone, you need 22 rows. And so you're gonna start with counting with this uh, first one and then just keep knitting row after row after row. Remember not to slip any edges, right? You're gonna knit all five of them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's time to cast off. Now take the working yarn and you're gonna wrap it around six of the pegs twice. Get your scissors, cut the working yarn, and now we're gonna do a drawstring cast off. So from the bottom of the loop, 
scoop up the yarn and feed it through. Continue all the way until you've done all five of your pegs and then take the loops off of the loom. Now you need to close your cast on right here. Pull on those loose loops until you close it up nicely. And then start to stretch your stitches again and then go ahead and pull on the bind off. And just like before, you see that you have that loop that's loose. So pull on the bottom of it. And then you're going to get your crochet hook and feed it through that loop. This was the one that we were correcting. Pull it from the bottom. And then get the working yarn and feed it all the way through. Pull it out. Make sure that you stretch out these stitches and we're going to then start to sew and we're going to use the pink yarn to sew up the pink and of course the beige to sew up the beige part. So get your needle and thread it on one end and again we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to sew up using the same procedure so you guys remember how we did this. You're going to go up and then over and try to make sure that you get um, that edge that doesn't look so good that you roll it in so that it, it goes into the inside and what you're sewing are the sides so that it doesn't show. It looks like there is no seam. So the objective is to try not to show the seam. Well, your leg is done and of course you need to do two of them. Do a little inspection if anything's wrong and you can see some yarn, just pull it out and cut it. And that's it, you're done. Well, with your parts. Now, it's time to assemble. Get your stuffing and you only need a little bit. We're going to uh, put that in the chest area and again you only need a little bit so don't overdo it just enough to give her some shape and uh, to be able to hold things together so once you've done that you're going to get your first leg and make sure that the seam is on the back side and the front is on the front side and then just uh, put it in you're going to put the other one on that side and you only need about an inch into it in fact just that cast on area and they get your needle and you're going to feed the needle through all the way to get it to the edge because you want to be able to start at the end position everything correctly and then you're going to push the needle through three sides all right make sure it goes all the way through which is why i'm telling you guys a metal needle is a good thing to have for this project and then just keep going, just keep sewing front and back. Make sure that you have all three parts, the front of the chest, the legs, and the back. And attach the rest of that bottom that we didn't do on the first shot. And keep going. If you feel like you need to reinforce it, then just do it again. Otherwise, attach the next leg and again make sure that the seam is on the back side not the front side and keep sewing remember to weave in your ends if you have a little short one just put the needle in first 
feed it through and then come to the middle of the doll and get your scissors and cut the excess yarn. There you go. Your legs are on and now it's time to move to your arms. So you have working yarn that's attached to the arms, feed, uh, thread your needle, attach to the shoulder area, and then just sew from the arm over to the very, very top of the shoulder and through the head. So this way, um, you're bringing that beige thread up and hiding it because if you put it too close to the pink it's going to show up a lot so go through the arm and up through the neck continue to do that until you feel that your arm is secure and once you feel like you've sewn enough then just take it from one end and push the needle all the way through to the other side and bring that working yarn out. You can use that piece to attach the other one. So go ahead and get your other arm. If you have an excess string, uh, you can cut it. You only need one to sew the arm on. Okay, get your string from behind the doll. It's the one that you use to sew up here and cross over come back to the front, bring them and cross them over again and bring it back to the back. And you're gonna want to tighten this as tight as you can. So pull and tie a knot and you're gonna do this really, really tight. This is gonna define your head as opposed to your chest. So. Once you feel secure, go ahead and do a second knot and then get your needle. And what we're going to do is weave in these ends. And in order to hide them, I bring them up into the head and out. And then I go ahead with my scissors and cut those out. So you have three more. Go ahead and feed those as well through the head. Don't worry about it. You are done. All right, guys, that is it. And remember that you need to come back for part two. So stay tuned. In the meantime, if you want to, you do have a basic doll that you can get really creative with and create some clothes, add some shoes, um, hair, a new face, like this little doll, or with some different hair like this one and we'll be having a pattern for all of these other little dolls coming up. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give us some suggestions or ideas. Until then, remember to like, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe.